She was a captain of the Victoria Metro under 16 side captain at Sandy Dragons and captain of the nation, believe it or not, the Australian breeze that took on New Zealand late last year. It's a pleasure to have on the line Catherine Smith. Catherine, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, first of all, let's talk about the recent Youth Girls Carnival. Again, you're on fire, um, tied for the best player of the tournament. Unfortunately, though, for your Sandy Dragons, just couldn't quite get the chocolates, the Calder Cannons being the better side on the day. Yeah, definitely. It was a great carnival. Um, all the girls put in a lot of effort through all the teams there. It was great to be a part of, and football's just developing so much with now six academies. Let's start, first of all, with your footy journey going back. Where did you first pull on the boots? I pulled out the boots at Blackburn Football Club um, in the boys at, in under nines. And, of course, it's been, what, six, seven years since then. And now, that of course, you're playing uh, youth girls football. Last year, as we said, you uh, captained the under-16 side at uh, Vic Metro. Now involved in the Sandy Dragons Academy. There's six academies running around at the moment. Now, how, how do the academies work with, with youth girls? Is it a case of rolling up the day and trying your hand out, or is it invitation only? Um, so there was a screening at the end of last year which um, from there you got picked to being a part of the academy and then from then on there's training about once every two weeks and obviously a carnival and a few camps here and there throughout the year. And of course you had the carnival just a couple of weeks ago so no doubt a pretty intense program throughout the off season. Yeah definitely we've had a big pre-season it's getting everyone right for big season ahead. Well, things have changed a lot with footy. Women's footy 20 years ago was just a case of maybe the girls showing up once or twice a week to do a bit of training before heading out and playing on a Saturday or Sunday. For you as a youth girl, not only with Sandy, but obviously now with the Blackburn Football Club, what is a typical week like for you for your training regime? Um, For me, I would normally have club training uh, Monday nights, um, Tuesdays uh, night off, I guess, but Every second week, there's Sandy training, so I'll have that. Wednesdays, I'll have Vic Metro. Thursdays would be a night off. Also play basketball on Friday, so that also gets a bit hectic. But then Saturday's um, youth girls game, and then Sunday, basketball again. So pretty big, busy schedule, but love it. Uh, before we talk about uh, Vic Metro, um, how do you fit all this in with schoolwork as well? Because no doubt you're coming into your VCE, coming into a very important part of, uh, of, of your school, um, school career. Um, how do you manage to try and work all that in? Um, all my coaches, I've talked to them, so they're all aware of what, um, how much sport I'm doing and we're obviously in year 11. So just managing which training sessions I do, looking after my body and just getting homework done. Um, it's the best way i found to do it. Let's talk about Vic Metro and the uh, under-16 side, which, of course, uh, you captain. The, the girls have been doing some pre-season down there, uh, using the facilities at the Richmond Football Club at Punt Road Over. What have they been like? They're absolutely amazing facilities down there. Um, the grandstand's just been rebuilt, so all the parents are enjoying it, and the ground's absolutely amazing, great surface. And we're, we're very lucky and thankful to be able to train on such a good ground. The Vic Metro um, side has produced some uh, star players over the years. I, I think back a couple of years ago to Ali Blackburn, who now, of course, is, is playing at Melbourne Uni. Um, uh, Alex Quigley, of course, going through Sunbury, now playing for St Albans this year. You're at the coalface being the captain. Who, who are some of the players that have been impressing you that are coming through the ranks? Um, Georgia Goulet, who's a year younger than me, has played for the last couple of years. Absolute star. Same with Izzy Huntington. Um, Maddie Lister, all players who are coming up the ranks and definitely watch out for them in the next year, I guess. The Australian Breeze last year, you had the captaining of uh, on, of uh, leading the nation side. How does that feel? I mean, you're one of the rare individuals that get to pull on a top representing your country. Yeah, I was absolutely honoured to get that opportunity. There was so many, I guess, all the girls in the team deserve that position as well. And um, I was shocked and just putting on the jumper was enough itself to be so honoured. But then I guess captain, it was absolutely amazing and basically best feeling in the world. Let's talk a little closer to home. You were also a co-captain of an under-16 flag for the Yarra Juniors. Um, are you amazed at how much the Yarra Junior area, and we're talking everywhere from Kew right through to around Blackburn, have come through and produced such quality youth girls' talent, considering that for years, I think it was a good six or seven years, the South East girls were just the dominant force in youth girls' football? Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. Um, from my first, first year in the Yarra team, 
I think we came second to South East, like you said, and then last two years, the girls have just stepped up and um, had really good teams, um, obviously developed over the last six years and, yeah, come a long way with so many new teams in the league as well. Now, this year you're taking on a co-coaching role with the uh, Blackburn uh, Youth Girls under-15 side. Uh, at such a young age yourself, 16, 17 years old, uh, what made you want to throw your hand up and take on the coaching challenge? Oh, um, I guess just being a part of the football community is absolutely amazing. And last year I was the coach of the 15 team and definitely put my hand up again this year because I absolutely love it. Um, just influence from my other previous coaches, just seeing what they're doing and wanting to do the same, I guess. It's an interesting level under 15 football because uh, that's when players are starting to develop and starting to take the game a little more seriously. What's your approach to under 15 football? Is it a case of rotation, giving everyone a go, or is it trying to look for the four points, trying to look for that victory, trying to, now at this stage in life, trying to get the best performance out of them? Um, I guess it's for me it's a bit of both. Obviously, I want to try and develop the girls as much as I can and get the most out of them and their football and also have heaps of fun on the way and the girls enjoy it more if we do some mix up trains trains do stuff like that um just trying to develop their football and their ability on the field and have a good culture at the club as well which i found is really good now, of course, uh, with Blackburn, you're fairly close to uh, the Eastern Devils, and I believe you're going to be taking on the challenge this year of, uh, of playing maybe one or two senior games with the Eastern Devils, and obviously depending on how you go, either Division One or Premier Division football. Yeah, so hopefully I'll pull on jump a few, few times this year. Um, done a bit of training over the last couple of weeks with them, and it's been absolutely great. And how have you found that as well when, you, when you're training and having to do the physical contest w- with some senior women that you know, are smart, they've been around for a few years and they're not afraid to throw around the body? It's been great. I've been loving the, I guess, the lifting intensity and the harder footy. And Definitely a bigger step, but it's great. And uh, hopefully they'll be looking forward to you uh, for uh, for hopefully bringing a win or two to the Eastern Devils. Of course, uh, no doubt you've got many friends there and uh, a lot of happening for them during the off-season with the retirement of Lee Watton. Yeah, it was a big last game for them at the end of the year, which I was lucky enough to get down and have a watch. And you've done that. I think I've seen one or two Twitter posts where you've gone along and watched the AFL women's exhibition match. Now, the normal question is when someone says, oh, compare yourself to a current AFL footballer, how about yourself? How closely have you been watching women's Premier Division football and women's AFL football? And if you were to compare yourself to anyone, who do you see yourself trying to mould mold your game style like? Oh, uh, that's a, a hard question. I've definitely been... i watched both the AFL games the last few years and kept up with um, senior football here and no doubt at nationals you get to play alongside and against some of the girls in the AFL Um, I don't know I like to I guess make Hutchins Eastern Devils player what she does off the back line I absolutely um, love so I try to learn learn off her as much as I can at Devils and I guess players like Ellie Black and you said before Maddie Carrick um, watch them, see how their style of football and try to replicate that. And before we let you go, many players, particularly the best players, always have personal goals of what they try to achieve. Obviously, everyone wants to win the flag. That's the big team goal. But for you as, as an individual, what do you see that you'd like to improve on the most going into season 2015? Um, for me, I've had a pretty big season to try to work on, I guess, my fitness and be able to run out more games through the midfield. Um, with Vic Metro, that's one thing I've tried to aim for. So, yeah, and definitely with Vic Metro this year, wanting to, I guess, um, do finish better than we did last year at the National Carnival, which we hopefully happen. And, yeah, just keep improving and keep um, being bigger and better following years.